In most card games, draft is arguably the most skill-intensive format. It is the grand equalizer thanks to not having to rely on your personal card pool like Constructed is. Instead, it is a test of your card evaluation abilities, deck building prowess, and ability to spot synergies. Most of all, it is a great way to hone your skills without having to have an extensive collection. Many different card games handle their drafting modes differently, and it can be a bit overwhelming to jump straight in. Hey guys, it's Nikita for Action Esports. My hope is that this video will give you a good overview and some tips for Artifact's drafting mode, The Gauntlet. In The Gauntlet, you will be picking cards from booster packs to develop a pool of 60 cards. You will then build a deck from the cards in your pool and play against other players who went through the same process. To begin, you will be presented with a fresh booster pack. The generic booster pack is made up of 12 cards one of which is guaranteed to be a hero, and two of which are guaranteed to be items. One of these cards will be a rare, and the rest will be a mix of several commons and a few uncommons. As an added bonus, every non-rare card has a small chance of being upgraded to a rare card instead. You will initially pick two out of the 12 cards from your fresh pack. Similar to Constructed, picking a hero will automatically give you three copies of their signature cards. However, unlike Constructed, you can have multiple copies of a hero in your finished draft deck. Additionally, you can draft more than three copies of any card, as there is no cap to how many of them can be included in your final deck. After picking your two cards, you'll be presented with a different booster pack, but this time with two less cards to pick from. This booster is one that a player somewhere else in the world has previously drafted from, so the average power level of the remaining cards is likely to be lower. However, it is not unreasonable to assume that you can still pick two cards that will greatly impact your overall deck. This process repeats itself, with subsequent packs getting smaller and smaller based on how many picks you already have. When you get down to a booster with only two cards, you will have no option but to add those cards to your draft pool. After your final pick from your first pack, you will repeat the process and draft packs 2 through 5. Overall, you will end up with 5 sets of 12 cards for a total pool of 60 cards. One important mechanic that's unique to drafting an artifact is hero picking. Drafting a hero card will prevent you from drafting one for the rest of that pack's draft. If you happen to be shown another hero in a subsequent pack, it'll be grayed out. It is possible to pick a hero mid-pack if the players who previously selected from it passed up on the hero card. If by the last pick you still have not picked a hero for that pack, you will be shown a random hero among your final pick that you will be forced to take. The important takeaway is that during the middle four picks there is no guarantee that a hero will be available to pick from. This creates another layer of strategy to the draft. Should you pick a hero early and build a deck around it? If you don't pick a hero now, will a better hero get passed later in the draft? Or will you be forced to pick a highly unfavorable hero as one of your last two picks? You should be continuously aware of this risk slash reward balance while drafting your deck. Similar to other games with card color systems, color distribution is critical, possibly even more so in Artifact. If you want to cast spells of a certain color in a lane, you need the matching hero. It is generally recommended that you stick to one to two colors while drafting so you don't force yourself into a situation where you have many non-hero cards in one color, but few heroes that enable the casting of those cards. The total amount of cards that you draft will be more than what is needed for a deck, so it is okay to occasionally draft a card that does not match the colors that you're aiming towards. You will not have to worry about drafting an exact spread of colors, as you have some post-draft filler options which I will touch on later. Your mana curve is an important concept to keep in mind. It is a snapshot of the overall combined card costs of all cards in your deck. While this might seem complicated, the main takeaway is that you don't want too many high-costed or too many low-costed cards in your deck. Because draft strategies are innately less refined than constructed ones, you want a good spread of card costs to ensure that your deck has an impact at all points in the game. To show this idea in action, consider this example. During a draft, you are presented with a powerful late game card and a solid early game card. Taking a look at your deck, you see that you already have many late game cards, and not many early game tools. This is an example of your curve being skewed upwards, commonly known as being top heavy. More often than not, given this scenario, you take the early game card to ensure your deck has an impact during the early game. These are very general concepts that can help you when you start out with drafting. Knowing when to apply them, and especially when not to, is what separates a good drafter from a great one. Now let's move on to deck building. After drafting your 5th pack, you will be left with 60 cards, comprised of 5 hero cards, plus a mix of spells, creeps, improvements, and item cards. The amount of cards that you drafted will be more than what is necessary for a legal deck, so you will pick which cards will be included and which won't. The minimum number of cards in your draft deck is 40. The other requirement is that your item deck contains at least 9 cards. To help with the variance of drafting, you are also allowed to include any number of cards from the basic set in your deck. The basic set includes some general cards and heroes that can help fill out missing slots in your deck and assist you with your color distribution if your draft turned out subpar. 
These cards are specifically designed to be very easy to include into different deck types. Cards like Leather Armor, Short Sword, and Traveler's Cloak provide necessary stats at low cost. Their power level compared to other cards that you can draft are intentionally lower to reward players that draft better item cards. At a first glance, it seems like Traveler's Cloak may be one of the most useful filler items from the basic set. At a meager cost of 3 gold for a plus 4 health boost, this item can be essential to keeping your heroes alive. Reliance on the basic set is not recommended. These cards are there to help fill out gaps and not be the main package that you're trying to fight with. However, you should definitely keep them in mind during drafting because they may enable potential combos that you can use to your advantage. And that's it. After building your regular and item deck, you'll be put into a game with another player that went through the same drafting and same deck building process. From here, everything will be the same as in a regular artifact game. Interestingly, certain cards that might be on the weaker side and constructed can show their strengths in Gauntlet games. Look out for these cards that are overperforming, and consider your experiences with them when you're picking cards for your next Gauntlet deck. Do you know of any good drafting strategies? Leave a comment if you do. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for future content. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.